Our four owners uh, are local, uh, two of which are practicing radiologists in Boca. Um, but when they started out, these four guys wanted to do something a little different than your typical brewery. You know, they didn't want the open warehouse format. They wanted something a little more intimate, a little more classy uh, to kind of go with the uh, surrounding clientele. Um, so we got something a little different. Um, we also have a lot of brick and darker colors. Kind of gives you that abbey, you know, monastery feel, even though there is no such no monastery. Uh, <laughs> take that monastery part out. Uh, I don't want to get into any kind of religion. And shit like that, but, uh. <laughs> Eric, would you mind giving us a tour of the brewery? Sure, follow me. Welcome to the Thunderdome. So, Barrel of Monks, uh, that's Craig, he's our head brewer. Woo! Craig. That is our brew house. That's it. That's your How you doing? So this is our this is where our brew day would begin if I were brewing, which I don't. But uh, this is where we store our grain. That is our mill, which simply cracks our grain open. You know, I was just thinking, uh, looking at this. Wow, it's a really small mill for such a big operation. And That's where we or, crack our coriander. <laughs> this is your boy Alden Rick. Nice. So that that is the this is monk this the is operation. the monk that oversees our operation. So once our grain is milled, it goes along our cable bay over to our brew house. It goes down the grist can. All that milled grain called grist goes into our mash tun. That's where we steep the grains, extracting flavors, colors, fermentable sugars, transferring everything into our water tun. That's where we separate the grain from the solution. There's no reason to drink the solution. There's no reason for the grain after this point. Once we're done here, transfer everything to our boil kettle. That is where Craig is right now. That is where we introduce our hops. Hops are used as the bittering agent in your beer to balance out that sweet sugar water. Once we're done boiling, we transfer into our fermenters. And that is where we pitch our yeast. The yeast will consume those sugars, converting them into alcohol and CO2 simultaneously. Um, essentially, the yeast is eating sugar, it's regurgitating alcohol, and farting out CO2. Um, there is no need to trap the CO2 at this point. We are waiting for all that sugar to be consumed to get to that desired ABV. The real reason you're here, alcohol. Don't lie to yourself, because I know the truth. Uh, once we're done here, uh, we transfer everything into our bright tanks. That's where we condition our beer. Uh, watch out for that. Uh, once we're done conditioning our beer by either adding, introducing adjuncts or pumping in CO2 to our forced carbonated beverages, we transfer everything into a bottle. So once we are ready to put our beer into kegs, it is kegged and then put it into our distribution cooler. And that is where all the kegs are going out into the market. And any beer that is going into a specialty cask goes into our barrel aging room. Once it's carbonated, there's no real way to pull the liquid out without introducing oxygen. Mm -hmm. So you actually have to pull it out, keg it, and then carbonate your beverage that way. Um, if it's going into kegs, we force carbonate. Any of our barrel aged beers that are going into bottles are bottle conditioned or re-fermented or naturally carbonated. Um, depends on who you talk to, which terminology you use. Um, what we do in that instance, instead of pumping in CO2, we pitch more yeast, more sugar. Yeast consumes that sugar. There's nowhere for that CO2 to go, so it forces it to dissolve down into the beer, creating your naturally carbonated beverage. Um, we use rum, bourbon, tequila, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Cabernet, Merlot, Apple Brandy, and Port Barrels so far. Um, we are always looking to expand, but a few things come into play when you barrel age your beers. Um, one, what beer goes in there, light blonde, thin solutions impacted a little more easily than your darker, thicker, heavier ones. Um, what spirit or wine was in there, bourbon's more in your face of the spirit as opposed to rum, so you're not going to let your beer sit as long in a bourbon barrel as you would in a rum barrel, and how wet the barrel was when we got it. More wine, more spirit left behind, more impact it's going to have on the product. So whenever it's time to check or taste, um, we go through this little nail. Um, what that does is allows the solution to flow out without allowing oxygen back into the solution. That is the reason we don't go through the bunk hole at the top because that allows oxygen, and oxygen and light are what makes your beer spoil or skunk or go bad. 
Um, oh, what? There's no set time for how long they're in there. It all depends on what's going on in that barrel. This is a living organism. Yeast consumes those sugars fermenting our beer, consumes any residual sugar from that wine or spirit, and yeast eats wood. So that is how those flavors of oak, burnt flavors, maybe vanilla or honey, depending on the spirit or wine, that is how those flavors impact your product. I did not know yeast ate wood until I started working here. Uh, just something that you don't really ask. So oh, I didn't know that either. Yeah. Um, and then there is, I don't know if I So how many, how many batches could go through a single barrel until the wood starts rotting out due to the yeast? Um, you usually go through, the, obviously your first run's gonna be your best, but you usually use a barrel two, maybe three times until it starts to turn. And by turn, I mean the bacteria and wild yeast starts to take yeah. over that barrel. This is a living organism. No matter how much acid or solution you use to clean this barrel, um, that yeast will survive and it will oh, live yeah. in this barrel. Of course. So, exactly. So, after a few times, barrel starts to turn and become sour. Um, then we actually make wild sour barrel aged beers. The next one that we have coming out is Peach Sorcery. Um, that is our wizard with peaches, bread, um, I believe lacto as well. Are lacto. You a, a bottle release party for that. We will. Um, that we're not. It's going to be after our anniversary, so it's either going to be in April or May. It just depends on when the beer is ready. I hope it's in April so I can come as a patron. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what this vessel's for, actually. Um, we transferred wow. all of the liquid out of that. We borrowed this from our good friends at Oddbury. Um, and what we did is we pitched all of our peaches into here. So we have we blended our barrels and we have a more consistent overall product as opposed to having two bottles side by side and them tasting completely different because they were pulled out of two different barrels. Where do you guys source your peaches from? Do you um, use canned product or, or fresh? Uh, no, we do not get fresh peaches. We either okay. get frozen peaches. If we were to get fresh peaches, we would have to cut them and then freeze them ourselves well, in order to sterilize them. Right. So. Well, actually, beyond sterilization, uh, peaches actually a summer fruit, so you find them fresh and good at this time of year. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It's, it was not as uh, cost effective to do it at this time of year than it would have been to do it a little later oh, on. Pe the peaches now <laughs> this time of year are like stones. They're like yeah. rocks. Yeah. I mean, I that when I did the, uh, the peach cobbler for yeah. our last beer dinner, I had to use canned peaches because I bought a whole case of fucking fresh peaches from our good buddies over. I won't throw their name out there, but <laughs> they were like a bunch of stones. So. Gotta now, can you, that. off topic, but can you ripen or in, uh, induce ripening by putting them in a paper bag like you would a banana or an yeah. avocado hey, or something like anything, that? Anything, uh, like certain um, fruits release a lot of gases that do that. Lemons, bananas too. Yeah. Um, you, as long as you have that fruit in there, I don't know what the ratio is, like how many bananas or lemons per Per whatever. bag, what size you bag, would, yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. shit. Yeah. But it does release a gas that uh, increases um, the ripening time. Mm -hmm. cool, man. Yeah, so that's one, peaches are one of the stone fruits we use. Um, our quad and double have stone fruit characteristics because of the dark Belgian candied sugar that we use. You know, more 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 along your your fig, your raisin, cherry kind of stone fruits as opposed to your olive, mango, peaches, that kind of thing. So, so what is your favorite beer here at the brewery? And on, I'm on, talking about season, not what you have now, but I mean all time favorite. I mean, I I like wild funky sour stuff. Um, either you know your saisons or your wild barrel aged sours, Brett beers, things like that. I have a very messed up palate, if you will. I, maybe it's from smoking for 15 years or what. I don't know, but my palate's not strong, so I need something to kick its ass um, in order to for me to taste it. But typically, like right now, Blood Orange Bliss. Um, our seasonal fruit beer in the summertime is my favorite beer that we have on a consistent basis that's single in Havana. It's a Belgian single, light blonde, four and a half percent that we have guava. Um, that beer started off as just a beer for a friend and turned into one of our best sellers. Nice. Um, it is perfect for this climate. It is perfect for just on a, a sessionable, easy drinking, beach beer, lake really beer. And Working that, in the garage, in the yard, it is just, it's perfect for South Florida, man. See, Single Havana was my favorite beer until they came out with Single in Paradise, mm. which I just like the fact he's had a little tip, he's like, why did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
the single in paradise is the Havana with the addition of passion fruit. Man, and we salt. soured that with oh. us. We added salt and uh, I believe lactic and citric acid. And there's something special sour about that beer, that man. It just man, yeah. wow. Yeah, 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 I forgot about that guy. Yeah, that's that's, that's enough. That's, that's a good one. So Bill, our uh, our brewmaster and owner, Bill is the Belgian traditionalist that if you mention an adjunct, whether it's a fruit, a chocolate, yeah, a nut, there a There is coffee, no gimmicks bean, with this guy. <laughs> no. He just rolls his eyes and says, do what you want. Um, he, it's not his forte. The reason these guys got into Belgian beer is that aside from falling in love with the, the beer itself um, after traveling and importing beers from all over the world, um, Belgian beer has been widely considered the best beer in the world. So um, that is why he's focused on it. But he is a Belgian traditionalist. Our original head brewer was the original head brewer at Funky Buddha. And if you know, if you know the beers that come out of there, they're a little more wild, a little more... Um, Gimmicky. They're, they're a little more like... <laughs> uh, yeah. A little <laughs> That's more of the that. Worst. <laughs> I wasn't going to use it, but... Um, oh, man, it is. No, they, is. they have a lot more... Um, Sweet potato casserole, <laughs> so uh yeah <laughs> that that school of thought versus belgian traditionalists they really did you see eye to eye when it came to uh introducing adjuncts into our beer um it took a while and uh usually we tend to make those beers without his knowledge and then just yeah. wait to I mean, see what well, he thinks. Well, it seems to be working out because this is my favorite brewery to go to and have a beer, so something must be right. You do come here when you're not working, Hell so yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a good sign. That's the beautiful about thing about this uh, this industry, like craft beer and like the food trucks. They're all We're all comp competitors, um, but we know there's a big enough piece of the pie where we can share in there. Um, all right, yeah. Well, not but for you guys. For maybe, the most part. Maybe for us. Um, <laughs> not us. Know. I'm totally... Uh, in agreement with, with when it comes to food trucks and whatnot. I mean, maybe not in this instance where now I'm taking over here seven days a week, yeah. but hell, man, if you got a different, uh, a different menu than me, there's no reason why if you have good food, you wouldn't sell as much as I did at the same event. Yeah. You know, I don't want to step on We have, yeah, so. exactly. We all have multiple trucks on larger events. If, you know, say someone can't make it, they'll call each other to fill in if they can and things like that. You know, if we need ingredients, we'll borrow from someone. If someone needs ingredients from us, we'll loan them out. Usually you return them with a case of beer. If you don't, you're not getting ingredients ever again. No, I'm just that's, it's just it's an it's, unspoken bond. Yeah, it's a, it's a good relationship that this industry is. It's a bunch of young, up-and-coming um, oh, yeah. business owners that For, are trying to start instance, something. For you mentioned this came from Aubrey. Yeah. You know, this it's a tight community. They do collaborations. Barrel of Funk. Speaking of the uh, the wilds that they do, and it's a different beer every year they do it. Yeah. I still have. I still have the uh, batch, the third one, batch number three. Batch three was the the blonde. Mm -hmm. That was that was last year. My buddy still got the second one too. Second one was the triple. The first one was wizard. Was the base. Yeah, I but, I like to, to age my beers for like a year or more. I've had uh, the Denison's. I still have your beer release. I can't remember the name of it. Last year's anniversary. Okay, so yeah, the port that. barrel aged Grand Crew. Yeah. Was it the Grand Crew? The I think it was a barrel aged Grand like, Crew. Oh, you're thinking of like Morta or Clotho. That's our Clotho. barrel age triple. Clotho. That was the release for uh, last year's anniversary. I think that was a brotherhood release. Yes, it was. Yeah, because you did the brotherhood. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't do the brotherhood uh, VIP that year. Um, but they're not doing a VIP um, for anniversary this year. Right. Yeah. Because I, I talked to Bill about it naturally. Yeah, our anniversary, March 30th. Check us out. Sheffery will be here. Um, over 30 beers on draft. About 10 guest breweries here, each bringing two beers themselves. We're going to have about 30 of our own. So um, it's going to be a great time. Block party for them, man. Hanging out outside, inside. Uh, live DJ. Um, yeah, just a good time. Good place to try a bunch of creative things that the guys in the back come up with. Yeah. And if people wanted to order and take home beers, how do they do that? Um, if you want to get beers to go, um, you have to pick them up during tasting room hours. Um, unfortunately, in this industry, it's illegal for us to ship okay. directly to yeah. the consumer. How do people order in advance? Um, if you want to order them in advance, you can either call the tasting room, email myself. Um, sometimes we will release pre-purchasing options online on our website. 
but it really depends on the beer that is being released that day. Um, but you will always be notified of what's going on in our tasting room on Facebook and Instagram especially. If um, not, go to Total Wine. Uh, come in during business hours, get your growler to go. They have a fridge right by the front door. Just so when you're walking out, you can go, oh, I need some beer at home. Hey, oh, guys. Then, you, then you walk out front, you see a food truck. Oh, I need some food when That's I get home. Right. I don't feel like cooking tonight. He's if got your back. If I had a name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Eric, tasting room manager, Barrel of Monks. You can get in touch with me by email, eric, E-R-I-K, at barrelofmonks.com. Sheffrey from Sheffrey Eats. Get in touch with me at Sheffrey at SheffreyEats.com. Check us out on the website. Subscribe. Check out a, check us out on our social media, Instagram, Facebook, both at Sheffrey Eats. Or, uh, you know, just uh, give us a call. Our information's on there. We can schedule you your private party today. Cheers to empty beers. Wayne.